Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Friday. I've decided to use my, uh, my pen as a microphone this time because uh, I've been wanting to get an actual microphone. I think it's much easier to hold compared to using it on the lapel. Uh, and I think it's just, it just looks a little bit more professional. So we'll be doing this for a while until you guys bully me into getting an actual microphone. But today I was going to be talking about one of the tech stocks that I haven't really discussed uh, since it went IPO at the end of 2020. But based off of what's been happening with the overall market, I thought it would just be a good time for me to talk about you know, just the overall market because I've been seeing a lot of people getting very upset with the overall market. So today I'm going to be talking about a specific type of stock that I'm staying away from at all costs because we're at a specific time in the market cycle where people that have been riding the wave of the super speculative stocks for the past like year at this point have made a lot of money. But we are getting to the point now where this week, uh, one of my speculative stocks that I own, Peloton, ticker symbol PTON, was down like 10% on Wednesday. And a lot of people were really upset with how the market was moving overall. I had some people saying that the market's not fair. Things are rigged because the stocks that the newer investors are playing are the ones that are down significantly. So today I'm going to be talking about speculative stocks. I'm going to be talking about kind of how I judge how volatile a stock is going to be before I uh, decide to buy in because there's one specific number that you can look up. It's really easy to determine how risky of a position it's going to be. Uh, and then I'm just going to give my thoughts on the overall market and talk about one of the underappreciated perks of being a shareholder of a company when it comes to actually voting in the shareholder meeting. So I'm going to be talking about that because I did get the email this morning about voting on GE. Uh, so I'll be talking about that towards the end of the video. So I've been talking about speculative stocks a lot recently because these are the ones that made a lot of money. When I think of the go-to speculative stock right now, I think kind of of NEO. When I say speculative stocks, the whole idea of it is it's not a company that's super well established. The idea of the share price increasing in and value significantly over the past couple months has a lot to do with newer investors getting involved and kind of the hope that the company is going to be very successful in the future. When you're investing in something like a NEO, it does have a, an actual product that they're putting out and they do have revenue, which is usually kind of the, the cutoff point for talking about speculative stocks. But the whole idea that it's gone up in value significantly is because it's been following Tesla and the success that it's had over the past 12 to 18 months. And so it's hoping that NEO is going to kind of go under the same path and do extremely well. And so far this week, NEO has been selling off extremely quickly. And so we've seen a 10% day. When I checked this morning, it was down like 7%. And this is what I would consider speculative stocks. The companies that did really well in 2020, not doing as well right now. We've been seeing a sell-off that has been very different than what we've been seeing for the past couple months. I made a video back in January, I believe, talking about these underappreciated types of stocks that have been outperforming the overall market. And these were the, the small cap stocks. And for the past couple of days, the Russell 2000, which is the index that follows the 2000 uh, small cap stocks, has been underperforming compared to the overall market. And it's been really interesting because for all of 2020, the NASDAQ had been outperforming the Dow Jones by like a significant margin. And now for the past week or so, it's been the NASDAQ that's been losing one and a half, two percent every day, whereas the Dow Jones has been relatively flat. So I want to talk about one specific number that you can look up really easily to figure out how volatile a stock is going to be. And that's with beta. Beta is a, a numerical value that's usually between, I don't know, negative, negative three to like four, I think is the highest I've ever seen. And basically a value of one means that for every expected 1% move of the S&P 500, this stock is going to follow it pretty much exactly. So if you have an index, I'll put up what the major indices look like right now, and they're all relatively similar, which like for the Dow Jones is sitting just below one. And then you have stuff like the NASDAQ that's a little bit higher because it's just more volatile overall. And so you can't have negative numbers. These are going to be the, the leveraged ETFs. These are going to be the inverse ETFs where if the S&P 500 goes up 1%, this one's going to go down like 2%. But you can just look up the value of these pretty easily. I just usually go to Yahoo Finance, just search the company that I'm looking for. And for example, when I looked at NEO this morning, it was sitting around two, which means that for every 1% the S&P 500 goes up over the past year, NEO has gone up around 2%. But it also works the opposite way. So when the market's doing really well, these are the stocks that you want to get involved with because these are going to be the high flyers. The stocks are going to have incredible returns while the overall market's doing relatively well. And we did just come out of the longest bull market in the history of the stock market. So these have been the plays that you've been wanting to find for the past, I guess, full year at this point. But now as the market starts to fall, these are the stocks that are going to be giving up a lot of its value relatively quickly. And so that too, for the beta, works the opposite way. So every 1% the S&P 500 goes down, you're going to expect that stock to go down by 2%. So that's why I'm rotating out of speculative stocks. At this point, the only really speculative stock I own is Peloton. And I'm owning it because I have faith in the company for the long term, not because I think it's going to be a high flyer in the next couple months. So while I am down in that position, I'm actually not down as much as maybe you would think because I did have a relatively good entry point based off of the Tekla analysis for a video that I made probably like two or three weeks ago. 
So I'm going to be holding for a long-term position. And the whole idea is that if the stock continues to fall, I'm happy buying at a lower price. And one of the questions I get all the time is, is it worth selling out of stocks that are maybe speculative in nature? Obviously, this is not financial advice. But the way I look at things is if I have a long-term bull thesis on a stock and it's still intact, I don't mind. The only way that I would really consider selling out of a stock is if something has happened recently, maybe an earnings report or just a news story that has made me not feel as confident about the company overall. Because when I buy into a stock, I'm thinking one, two, five years in advance. And so it's very unlikely for something to change in the short term that would make me want to sell out. I did close out an options position on GE this morning just because there was the likelihood that I was going to get assigned 100 shares. And while that's not a big deal, and I mean, GE is my top stock for 2021, it's the idea that I'm trying to hold as much as my portfolio in cash at this point. So I still made money on the put, actually, considering that the stock price has gone up so much and you have the theta decay. So I did actually make some money on that, even though the stock uh, is currently in the money because it's below $13. But I want to be holding as much as my portfolio as I can in cash. Because the way I'm planning on playing the stock market right now is I'm going to be waiting to see what's been falling because we're not in correction territory yet. I believe we're pretty close again, but that's like the second time that's happened in the past couple of months. So on the dips, I'm going to be buying blue chip stocks. These are going to be my Nikes, Microsoft, uh, Apple. These are the stocks that don't go on discount very often. And so as the market falls, I'm going to be buying those blue chips. And if the market continues to fall, that's when you start looking at the speculative stocks again, because these are stocks that are not going to do well if the market's falling. But the second that the market starts revving up again, those are going to be the stocks to buy. So right now, I am not really rotating out of speculative stocks. There's not stocks that are on my watch list at this point because the market's been too volatile for that. It's not worth trying to pick the bottom to try to lose 10% in the next couple of days. So that's my plan. I'm going to be doing nothing, which is not as fun to think about instead of me saying, oh, I'm going to be buying every stock I possibly can. I think patience is a virtue, and I think waiting for a good opportunity is always the way to play the overall stock market. And then I want to talk about what it means to be a shareholder, because I feel like a lot of the newer investors don't really understand that when you buy into a stock, you have a vote. And so when you have the shareholder meeting, it's usually an annual meeting, you get a vote on the, the future of the company. Usually it's stuff that doesn't really affect you, like a, a board appointee. This is something where the board will give a recommendation, uh, and you can vote on it. And so for the most part, I vote with the lines that the the company just kind of agrees with. So usually the company will have a recommendation how they're voting, yes or no. And there are some times when I have a very strong opinion going the opposite way. I got an email saying I could vote on the GE shareholders meeting. And the only thing that I was really caring about, I voted with the, the recommendation of the company for everything, except for the stock split. The stock split is something that I've been pretty vocal about in the past because for someone like myself that has a relatively small portfolio, being able to use the wheel strategy on something like a GE was one of the reasons why I was extremely bullish on it overall, because even if the stock went down uh, or if it was just relatively flat, I could be selling these options to bring in more money to buy more shares. And so this reverse stock split of a one to eight makes it so that the idea is that it brings the number of shares available around the same number as some of the companies that have similar market caps. And I remember the one that they uh, talked about was, I believe it was Lowe's. And while that kind of makes sense, I don't like the idea of that. And so this was something where I voted no. This is the first time that I voted against the recommendation of the company. And so this is something that I don't think a lot of people think about when they buy into a stock, because it is kind of like politics where the more money you have, the more likely your vote's going to go through. Because when you own one share, you're allowed one vote. And so the more shares you have, the more vote you have, and the more say you have with what happens with the overall company. That's what Ryan Cohen's been doing with, uh, with GameStop. He bought a lot of shares, and so he has... A large voice and so he gets a vote for every share that he owns and i believe he's up to like 13 percent at this point and he has a task force that he's heading up so he has a pretty strong sway in gamestop but someone like myself doesn't have a lot of votes i'm just out here trying to explain to the newer investors what it means to be a shareholder because i don't think many people kind of understand that they get a vote on the future of the company that's what being a shareholder means yes you get to make money if the stock price goes up but you also kind of get to shape the company in the future most of the time it doesn't really do anything because we don't have like hundreds of thousands of shares. But for the hedge funds that have a large sway, that is one of the positives of being a shareholder in a company. So as of right now, the market's been very interesting. Uh, I'm going to make a video this weekend going over all the news that happened in this past week because the market was pretty all over the place. We had some big earnings reports, which I talked about uh, on Wednesday's video. Hopefully you guys have been relatively safe out there in the stock market. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you in the next video.